Hi, I'm Mark Shatlin, and you're listening to me, Arsenal's Fan of the Week, on Hybrid Hills Podcast. Hello and welcome to another episode of Highbury in Heels. I believe this is episode 18 and this week I am joined by my partner in crime here, Amanda. Welcome to the show, Amanda. Hello, my darling. How are you? Doing really, really well. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking. Um, and you know what we love on Highbury in Heels as much as we love our big guests and next week... We'll tell you who our guest is towards the end of the show. I think you guys are going to love it. You may have heard us mention it last week. But this week, we have our Arsenal Fan of the Week. Remember, we told you, you can be on the show with us, doing an entire show with the Highbury and Hill squad, is Mr. Mark Shatliff. Welcome to the show, Mark. Hello, ladies. Thank you for having me on. Big fan of the show. Thank you very much for coming on. And I don't know if you guys remember, but Mark um, was the uh, the young man who was doing the the run, the race. I think he had Hector Bellerin's shoes. And how did how did that go, Mark? How did it all go? Yeah, it went really well. So I'm in training for the London Marathon on the 22nd of April, and uh, Hector Bellerin was very uh, very kind in donating uh, a signed boot for me to raffle off. And that actually finished yesterday and managed to raise £200 to put towards a really, really fantastic charity, which puts on uh, days out for visually impaired children. So uh, really good, really, really well. The only hard part now is I have to go out and run it, which it isn't ideal, but hey. We're very How proud mar- of you. We are. How many miles is it, Mark? It is oh, 26.2 miles. Oh, so pretty, God. pretty far. <laughs> and I've never run that far before in my life, but uh uh, yeah, something for the uh, something for the bucket list, I think. A hundred percent a bucket list moment. And I'd just like to yep. add here that the Greeks also invented the marathon. Uh, back in the day, <laughs> in ancient Greece, some dude ran from a place called Marathone um, <laughs> to, to another place. But anyway, uh, I digress. Remember what happens when that happens. You can follow Mark at Marky249, at Marky249. Get stuck in, donate some money. And if any Arsenal players are listening to this, uh, maybe our next week's guest could help. Um, but if you want to donate to a great cause, then please um, hit us up at Highbury Heels as well on Twitter. Right, the menu for today's show. Uh, have a look at what we did over the weekend. Arsenal v Stoke, of course. We look ahead to the Europa League. Uh, we're going to do a little bit around the league as well. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for these guys in terms of uh, Manchester City and our Invincibles. We're going to be remembering Rocky Rowcastle um, for a couple of minutes. Uh, total Arsenal legend. Uh, a little snog marry avoid and a poll of the week. And then Amanda will let you know a little bit about next week's show. So it's just us today. The other girls are uh, super busy uh, working away. Um, so what did you guys do for Easter weekend, Amanda? Um, <laughs> not that we're not busy, by the way. Uh, I'm busy too. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> anyway, carry on. Um, Easter was quite nice, a bit quiet. Um, did lots of stuff at home and then went to the football yesterday. Mm. Easter Sunday now, football. Is it as good as Christmas Eve football or, or no, Boxing Day football? It's not, is it? Nah, nah. It's not the same. It, Christmas is a little bit better. But I want to know what you did over the weekend. Well, it wasn't boring, I have to say. And I know we do not, this is not a podcast um, where we discuss MLS, but I think that we're going to be talking about it just a little bit um when there's a dude called Zlatan involved um I don't know if you guys did you guys see the goal did you see his goal I did I I did I watched it live it was unbelievable so Mark I was at the game and you know when you're sitting in the press box as well there's a certain decorum you have to follow you're really not supposed to show any allegiance to any team (laughs) Uh, and I was actually sitting next to the LAFC social media team. And when that Carlos Vela's first goal, by the way, a little round of applause for our old boy, Carlos. Oh, yes. That Definitely was so. a sweet left foot, that goal. And boy, did he look like the best player on the pitch for the first 45 minutes. I mean, you could, you could just see the difference, right? He scored another one. I predicted he'd score two goals and he did, but I didn't, you know, anyway. Um, and so the game starts to unfold. It's the first um, derby between LAFC and LA Galaxy. It's been the most anticipated MLS game, probably since David Beckham has been here. I've never seen so much media at a game since David Beckham's last match when he won MLS Cup. 
and it was absolutely unbelievable. So they go 3-0 up and the LAFC uh, crew are loving it because, you know, they are really the Noisy Neighbours 2.0. It's very much like City United and it's very much like everyone saying there's a power shift in North London when we all know that until Tottenham win a trophy, there's really no power shift. The same's happening here in Los Angeles. And LAFC, this shiny, new, sexy toy, they've got the stadium that's closer to, to downtown, uh, LA Galaxy a little bit further out off the 405 in Carson. And so, you know, they're reveling in all of this. Second half, they get one back. And then the crowd just starts shouting, we want Zlatan, do, 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 do. And he um, starts warming up and the place goes nuts. It's sold out. It, the atmosphere is amazing, very much like a European match. It was really, really intense. Um, lots of cheering, old school football chanting, you know, some goading and banter. It was brilliant. Zlatan comes on. And he, uh, they get it back to 3-2, right? And then we could see this unfolding in the press box, the way the ball landed to him. And he just smacks it and scores the most unbelievable goal. And if you haven't seen it, you have got to go online to YouTube and check Zlatan's goal against LAFC. The place went nuts. I mean, it felt like North London derby go nuts when we go up against Spurs or we get an equaliser. It was... And when you're watching it, Mark, that atmosphere came across, didn't it, when you were watching it live? Yeah, def- definitely so. And, you know, the MLS games I've seen before, like the uh, the atmosphere seems a bit, you know, a bit scripted and a little bit flat. But, yeah, it seemed like a, a proper amazing atmosphere. And I just think the great thing is with Zlatan is that he, <laughs> the way he talks, the way he carries himself, you know, obviously he's absolutely full of confidence, borderline arrogance, but he just seems to back it up every single time and the fact that the um i think the day before he signed sorry the day after he signed he put something in uh, one in one of the la papers just saying you're welcome zlatan you know that that kind of <laughs> that oh, kind of yeah said he all. took an ad out in the la times a full page and he yeah. goes dear los angeles you're welcome love zlatan you know and oh then oh my god <laughs> what's he like and, and he backs it up he does back it up but so does ronaldo and amanda it's really interesting people love to hate ronaldo but people just love to love zlatan it seems well, it's, mm. it's amazing how one can get away with it and the other can't, right? Like Ronaldo just can't get away with what, what Zlatan gets away with. And I think it is what Mark is saying. It's like the way he handles himself in press conferences, the things he says. I just don't think Ronaldo has that humor about him. You know, um, and so it's uh, in he in the first press conference, he's like, I feel like Benjamin Button. I was born um, old and I'm going to die young. I mean, just some of the stuff he says is amazing. And then he gets the winner. And I was um, making my way down and down to the press box. But when he got the equalizer, even the people in the press box were like, oh, my God. And as I said, you're not really supposed to react that way but people just couldn't help it and then for the winner I was walking down to go to the interview room and I said you know what I'm just going to pop my head in because I went into where the LA riot squad that's that's what their fans are called and he scores that header and I was in the middle of it then and the place just went absolutely nuts and I thought it was brilliant for LA Galaxy because they're under the cosh um, Ashley Cole, um, you could hear him saying afterwards when the, all the players were in, in the circle together, he goes, what a great fucking comeback. I mean, it was, <laughs> it, it, you know, it was just, it was one of those moments where a lot of people, even, even like Arlo White, who does the NBC uh, Premier League coverage here said, where were you? And to be there, um, was unbelievable. And it was the most exciting MLS game I've ever been to. And I've seen Beckham win MLS Cup um, at that same stadium. But this was off the hook different. So that is what I did over the weekend. I am jealous, to be honest. <laughs> I am jealous. It's, I mean, you were sending me lots of stuff that was going on that you were watching. And it's only him, isn't it? That's it. Only him that would do that. And get away with it, to be honest. You just can't write that stuff, can you guys? No. 
I mean, this is Roy of the Rovers, isn't it? This is what we love about football. You know, it's there's there are moments like that that you just revel in as a fan. And then afterwards, he was saying, he goes, "I if that game went on ten minutes longer, or if I scored another goal, I couldn't have run around and celebrated because I was knackered." He didn't realize (laughs) the the heat in LA, and he was sitting on the bench, and he was saying, he goes, "I actually was going to ask someone for suntan lotion because my face was getting so hot." So. I think, you know, he's just added another level of excitement to the season. I think the league really needed it. And when you've got 75,000 fans showing up in Atlanta as well, now you have the Swedish sorcerer here. It should make for some interesting stories. So I just wanted to share that little anecdote with um, all the gooners out there and just so people can understand how exciting it is to get a player like him here. Um, you know, we have David Villa here and we had Pirlo and Lampard and, you know, a bunch of others, but he's on a different level. There's Messi, Ronaldo and Zlatan, I think, in Yester in terms of legends who are still playing the game. Agree? Disagree? Mm, yeah, I'd agree with that. Definitely. All right. Oh, good. I, I think he's. I think he's just gonna blitz it up in a. Yeah. It's just, no, sorry, bling it up. That's what I mean. Blitz oh, look it at up. you. <laughs> look at me with yeah. a bling. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's just got that charisma, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's brilliant. He is. He reminds me of the Eric Cantona of the old days. Yeah. Just that. That that. What is it? That like cockiness. You know, but he's a great player. He is. Yep. He's yeah. He's a great I think player. It's, it's infectious as well. Like, if you've got a player like that in your team who's oozing that confidence, it, it spreads. You like, you know, you, the players around him who usually have like six or seven out of ten games will look at him and now he's in the squad and he just, yeah, it, it just breathes confidence, really. Yeah, um, really good stuff. Anyway, enough about him and enough about that. Let's get on to some Gooner talk, shall we, Gooners? Hey, yes, yeah, let's, do, let's it. do it. And the interdull was done, and we were all hoping we'd come back and keep our winning ways. We played <clears> one <throat> of our nemesis. I think, other than Tottenham, is there a team that we loathe more than Stoke City? On a scale of one to ten, it's <sighs> it's, it's a ten plus. I mean, we we obviously Tottenham are our enemy, right? But Stoke have become a new enemy, haven't they? In in a in a weird kind of way, just because of all the history that we've had o- over the last few weeks. That's true. They're certainly they're, they're certainly up there. I'd say for me, I'd say Chelsea United maybe a little bit more than Stoke in a minute because on on um, on a playing level, you know they've not really they've not really pushed us around that much. I know they 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 beat us a few times, but I think for me, I've got more of a hatred towards or Chelsea United rather than Stoke. Um, but mm. that's just on a, on a personal level. Amanda, I think United definitely just because of the history we've had with it. It's the greatest rivalry in the history of the Premier League, isn't it? Man United, Arsenal, you know, so they're up there, of course. Um, right, it's a different hate for me, okay? <clears throat> United didn't go out um, and injure a player, not saying they did on purpose, and then what happened after. That's my issue. Mm. Um, players make tackles that cause terrible um, injuries without meaning to, obviously. But what happens after, and I'm not blaming Shawcross here, their fans and the way they treated Ramsey and everything about their managers and the way they used to treat us, they can go and do one. I wish we would have relegated them yesterday. Mm. Man United is more of a rivalry, more of a, how can I put it, more of a game fan thing. I don't, I actually think I hate Stoke more, to be honest. I really um, <laughs> Yeah, I think in it, because of because of what they did to Ramsey, you know, mm. what what they only sung about him yesterday in previous matches. I'm not going to even repeat on here was just disgusting. Mm. They're filth, and I'm sorry. Um, I hate Tottenham and United for different reasons. Okay, really do. Yeah, I I agree. I think Tottenham United is a competitiveness, and there's. You know, the, as I said, the rivalry with United and, of course, the, the rise of Tottenham a little bit has added to our rivalry even more. But, you know, when you're just Derby um, enemies, there's always going to be that that kind of hatred. And I think with Stoke it is. It's one of those. I think it's how some fans feel towards Millwall. You know, there's just a layer and a, and a level to their fanship and the type of behavior over the years that just makes you not like them for so many different reasons. But let's let's get stuck into um, the game a little bit. Uh, the first half was completely rancid. 
I mean, it mm. was probably uh, I was texting back and forth with um, with Rebecca Lowe a little bit, who's the host of uh, the the Premier League stuff here on NBC. And I was saying to her, like, this is just awful. And even for them watching it, you know, in that first half, having to talk about it and stuff, there was nothing in that first half. I mean, Amanda, you were there. It was it was awful football. You got it wrong, darling. The first half, there was nothing for 70 minutes. It was, <laughs> it was, and the word that you used when you were texting me, rancid is the word. It was... Seventy. Well, I'd like to say 69, 70 minutes of tactical ineptness. Mm. You know, we're lucky Stoke couldn't score, right? Um, I, I don't even. I don't know what happened. I really don't know it. Back, backwards football, sideways football. No one looking up. There was no service to um, over my ang yet to keep coming deep. It, it was just schoolboy errors yeah it's I just mean, the apathy honestly. across the board isn't it like yeah. the, the, the heart you know half empty stadium we don't really have anything to play from the league we can't really go up the table we can't really go down the table i just think yeah it's just, just listen flat. when 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 shakiri is the story a fat shakiri by the way is the story in the first half of any match yeah. you know it's <laughs> rancid okay and I wanted to ask you guys, before we get onto a couple of the controversial um, talking points, we had 69% pos- uh, possession. We had 24 shots on goal. 11 of those uh, were on target. We completed 84% of our passing uh, and 76% of that was in the attacking third. Um, you know, I think that when you look at what Shakiri did with that corner in the first half where it hit the post... Let me ask you guys, don't moments like that, um, Amanda, worry you about Ospina? He was nowhere. He totally misjudged that. People talk about Caballero misjudging Ericsson's shot yesterday in the Chelsea Tottenham game. But it, what moments like that, as much as I love him as a shot stopper, and I think he's a great shot stopper, positionally, Ospina is still a massive concern. Did you not think that when you saw that moment? No, I don't actually. I quite like Ospina. I don't feel worried with him, to be honest. I, I feel more worried with Czech sometimes. Why well, are you concerned by him, Soph? Very much so. I'm. I'm a. I, as okay. I said, I've watched. I've seen him excel, and I've, I've. I watched him here in Copa America. You know, he's. I think as a shot stopper, he's super, super talented. But there's just some moments where, and I think what it is, um, Mark, as well that that bothers me is that he's an inch too short sometimes in moments yeah. in games. Sometimes he's great. But sometimes that inch is the difference between letting in a goal and saving something. Yeah, definitely. So um, I'm quite critical of the Arsenal goalie. So I play in goal myself. I always have done. And I just feel Look that, you. yeah, you, you, summed, yeah. <laughs> you, summed, you summed up completely by saying good shot stopper. I think I think good. you need to be more than a good shot stopper to be playing in goal for the Arsenal. Um, I think you need like, your distribution, your handling. It's got to be more than just good shot stopper, and uh, and yeah, I don't feel overly comfortable with with either of them. I think our main focus for the summer is is getting a number one for the future. Um, who it is, I don't really know going forwards, but uh, we we definitely need a we need a long term solution for a number one goalie. I saw us was linked with like Ike Casillas the other day, and which seems oh, a bit for crying short sighted and pointless. Like, what is the point? What is the point of a uh, you know signing a goalie like that? I'd like um. The guy from uh, the guy from Atletico Madrid, Old Black, I think he could be very gettable, and I think what I've seen of him, he looks solid. But uh, yeah, you can't you can't be misjudging corners and letting the ball hit the post. It's just you, yeah, you can't. That can't happen. Someone playing videos in the background. Sorry, that Not was me. my fault. Yeah. Not Sorry. See, misbehaving again, Amanda. If you misbehave again, you'll get a yellow card, all right? This is a (laughs) warning, an absolute warning. Um, So let's talk a little bit about the the starting lineup as well because I felt that – you know, I feel that I think that El Nenny has earned some of his stripes lately, but I also think Wenger had one eye on uh, Europa League against Siska uh, on Thursday – I felt the game changed, even though we were one nil up. I think the game changed when Mickey came on. His energy mm. 
is so infectious. He takes players with him, creates spaces um, for other players, especially players like Aubameyang and Ozil. It's confusing for defences because then when you have those three playing, they don't know who to track. They're worried about running with one and then letting the other one go. Um, Amanda, I felt like he completely energised um, the team. And when he came on, he made all the difference. Oh, he did. I was talking about this today. Oh, he did. He was. He just changed it. Him and Lacazette, I have to be honest, came on and absolutely changed it for me. His energy, his precision, he knew what to do. It changed it straight away, honestly. Yeah. And he's won the um, Arsenal Player of the uh, Month award as well, which I think is very well deserved. Um, he does give us something different. Do you like him, Mark? Do you rate him? I do, I do. I've got to hold my hands up and say that when the whole Alexis thing was happening, uh, he was going to United, and I just thought, oh, you're great. It's going to be like another sort of Danny Welbeck situation where he's going to get a cast off and, like, you know, another average player. But he, he's quality. He's a really good player. Like, he's one of the uh, the first players to look out for when we play, like, when they release the, uh, the team at the start mm-hmm. of the game. But, yeah, I think it's really good. But, yeah, I've got to hold my hands up. I, I weren't that bothered on him, like, when he was joining. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. But now I'm like, yeah, he's class. I think he's decent. Yeah, I loved him at Dortmund. I think he had a bit of a rough time, obviously, under Mourinho, as we've seen Sanchez and most creative players struggle with Mourinho, mm. whether he was at, um, you know, uh, at Chelsea as well. We saw that too. So uh, let's um, let's get on to, here's what we're going to do. I think for the next few bits that we need to talk about, because I want to talk about Lacazette and the penalty and the fact that I loved seeing him back to being and looking really, really sharp. But in order for us to get onto that convo, I think we need to bring in the ref because there are, there was definitely one penalty that was controversial and has caused a little bit of a storm. So it is that time of week. I'm on a yellow card, unfortunately, but I've kept it clean. So does that mean, Amanda, that my yellow cards are 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 gone now because I've I've kind of gone five or six games without getting another one, right? Doesn't it does it go away? Is that what No. No, no we'd play to the end of April, okay? Sure, fine. Welcome to the show, Ref. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever wherever you are in the world. In uh, your world, I think it's evening. In my world, it's morning. Um, we also have our Arsenal fan of the week on, Mark. If you can be, please be nice to him and try and, you know, ease him in gently. Not too rough, not too many warnings or cards. That'll be lovely. As long as he sticks to the rules, we're fine. Unlike you, he keeps stepping over the line. Right. <laughs> Fine. Um, let's talk about uh, the reason why we have you on, which is the first penalty in the Arsenal v Stoke, Stoke game seems to have caused a bit of dialogue and conversation. It seems split. Some people think it was a clear cut penalty, and others think there was uh, there was no there was no penalty here. Talk us through the process. What you think the referee saw, why he gave it, um, versus what you actually think should have happened. I think it's one of these that. Um, when you watch a TV replay, it shows you that it's not a penalty. But at full speed, uh, the referee gets one view um, and he has to go off his gut instincts and he has to go off what he thinks he's seen and, and, and his perception. And he thought there was a, there was a clear clip uh, on the Arsenal player. When you, watch the, when you watch the replay, for me, it's very clear on replay that the player gets the ball and, and the Arsenal player's foot connects with the back of the, the Stoke player's leg. Um, and I don't think it's a penalty, but on replay. At, at first view, when I was watching it live, and I know I always say this, I always go off my gut instinct. And my gut instinct as I was watching it was I thought it was a penalty. I didn't think he'd taken the ball. Then when you see it, he has. And that is one of those occasions that if you did have VAR, which, as you know, I don't necessarily agree with, but if you did have VAR, I think it would have been overturned. I think there was a a clear and obvious reason um, not to give the penalty. So I think the referee, I think the referee can't be blamed in that instant. I I don't think nobody's at fault. I don't think the players cheated, died or anything like that. There was was contact. Um, But the player got the ball. 
um, and he got the ball first. And there was, yeah, it's, it's a clear cut one, but on replay. So the referee's got a, a tough one to to give there. Mm. Mark and Amanda, uh, Mark, what was your what was your take on it? Um, uh, when it happened, when it happened live, I thought, yeah, penalty all day long. And then when I saw the replay, the more re- <laughs> the more replays I saw, the more unclear it got for me, <laughs> to, which is uh, which is a bit strange. But yeah, live, I thought penalty. And then the more replays I got, it could have gone either way. Like I can't. I've seen it so many times now. I'm maybe like 60, 40 in favour of being a penalty, but. Mm. Tough, yeah, it tough was a call. tough one. Amanda, really tough Amanda, you were there, and um, in, I think on first instinct, most people did see from from that angle that the ref is talking about that it was a penalty. What were the gooners saying around you at the time? It's really hard because it was down the other end. You know, I sit near the north bank, and it was down the clock end, and I don't know to be honest. It was it was going away from me. It looked like a penalty went down, but I'm one of these now that I don't say anything until I've spoken to my mate, and then I don't say anything until I've watched match of the day. And it wasn't a penalty for me. It wasn't a dive. It wasn't any of that going on. Um, it just was a, a coming of the legs. Got cold. It wasn't a penalty. I can understand why people would say that. And ref, you really thought that he won won the ball. So let's say you're in that situation, and I know you hate talking about VAR, but it's been such a cluster since the last time we spoke. Um, case in point was that Tottenham um, Cup game uh, at Wembley on a chilly, chilly night, freezing night. Um, do you do you, if you're looking at that again? Let's say you give the penalty, you go to the VAR. Um, you, you know, your, your colleagues who are looking at it too. Are you overturning that decision? 100%. I, I, I don't, I, I've just a mark, you know, I've just heard Mark say that he, he's still, he's still not sure. I've seen it three or four times, four or five times maybe. He, he gets the ball. Of that, I'm 100% convinced. So, yeah, I think if that goes to, if the, I think if the referee has a second look at it, I think he, uh, I think he overturns his original decision. Interesting. That's, that's Maybe I'm watching it with red tinted Sorry? glasses. Mate. I must be watching it with red tinted glasses. That's why. Okay. Well, no, I think, I, you know, I think, uh, I think that, you know, when you, when at the time, it really did seem like he he clipped him, and and I think, mm. and ref, you would agree with this in this instance. If you're refereeing that particular match, there is no question whatsoever. Ozil did not dive in this instance, did he? Oh. Zero. No, absolutely not. No, the contact is made. There's contact with the player. The player kicks. The player kicks the back of the Stoke defender's leg. He goes to. He's following through with his foot, and the ball. Uh, he, his foot makes connection. So it's yeah. There's no. There's no. Um, there's no inference that they, the Arsenal player has done anything wrong. You know, football. Football is a contact sport, and therefore there is contact at times, and there's contact in a penalty area. Mm. Doesn't necessarily always mean it's a penalty and doesn't always necessarily mean it isn't a penalty in that instant for me and Mark yeah you, you, I don't know I mean I've seen it I, have, I haven't seen it once I've seen it several times and for me he takes the ball okay. but as I said okay. I don't think the referee can, can make that call okay how about let's talk about the second penalty before we get the ref out of here thanks again for joining us ref we know you're very busy um, oh. brushing up on all of the rules and regulations of the beautiful <laughs> game. Uh, <laughs> the, the second one, a clear cut penalty. No, we see this argy bargy stuff um, in the game a lot. Uh, but to me, that uh, foul on Lacazette was a clear push. It, it wasn't. It wasn't shoulder to shoulder or anything like that. It was a clear push. Agree or disagree, referee? Never a penalty. What? I'm on. Oh, what? Shut I'm on. I'm on. Shut up. <laughs> Oh, oh excuse right. me, can she get a yellow card? She just told you to shut up. I mean, what is that she, about? Yes, she did, Ref. She, she, to be fair, that's that's quite complimentary from Amanda, so that's, oh. that's all right. She's not swore or anything. Um, it's no, never, it's a victimised here. Crikey, Favorite carry on. Deal, deal with it. Deal with it, <laughs> Um it's it's the clearest penalty you'll see. I mean, it's absolutely brainless defending. I mean, I don't know what he's trying to achieve. He's going nowhere. Lacazette, he's, he's, the, the ball's going out of the penalty area. He's going down an alley. He has, all he has to do is stand him up. He tries to claim it's shoulder to shoulder. It's, it's, it's shoulder push into Lacazette's, uh, the back of Lacazette's back in, in between his shoulder blades. Yeah, it's absolutely brainless. And I don't know, did he get booked, the player? 
I can't remember if you got I don't remember. Yeah, I don't, should I don't know, actually. Should have, he should have been booked, but not for the foul. He should have been booked for being absolutely brain dead. Wherever he should have gone, I'm booking you in. Not for the foul. It's a bit of a nothing push. But you're an absolute idiot, pal. What are you doing? You have just given your team, uh, mm-hmm. and you know you, you're, you're battling against relegation. You're, you're going, you're going down the way it's going. Your goal difference is 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 going downwards, and you are giving another goal against you by yeah. just shoving someone in the back. Yeah. In fact, I'll give you a red yeah. card get off because you're an idiot. You're I love that. Better off without you. I love that. that. I love that. And if anything that adds to Stoke being relegated, referee, I am in alignment with you on that one. Listen, thanks for coming on. I, we want to. We, uh, we want to get you back on because we know you love talking about VAR so much and I want to have a conversation with you about how much it's going to ruin the World Cup. So yeah, um, was before you go real quick, was there anything else you saw over the weekend that you thought was controversial or anything that you had your yeah. eye on? Yeah, obviously there was the, there was the Mane incident in the Liverpool game. The referee got uh, that, incident, that incident correct. It was a linesman actually who gave it. Um, I, I could understand whether the referee may think that was a penalty. And the linesman had a great view of it, and he and he and he got it right. And the carrier incident at the other end is a definite penalty. Kick, kick, goalkeepers actually get away with that quite a lot. That's all, all all penalty all day long. But Mane, what the referee is doing, not sending Mane off for a second yellow, I have absolutely no idea. However, I have noticed that play referees are not booking people for deliberate handball mm. all the time. There was one in mm. there was one in the Manchester United game. Oh, sorry, the Manchester City Everton game where Sané handballs one doesn't get a yellow card. It's interesting; they don't seem to be throwing out yellow cards for deliberate handball, and it is a yellow card offence. So Mane's a lucky boy to stay on the field, and who knows? And he's doing out of the Merseyside dive as well. So no doubt Everton will have a bleat about that. All right. Well, we're lucky boys and girls here to have the ref on. Thanks uh, once again for your insights, ref. And uh, you know, kind of uh, let Amanda go there, but I'll remember that next time you're on. I will. So. Uh... We'll talk, we'll talk and Mark soon. needs to polish his rose tinted glasses or red tinted glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, referee, I'll for not talking to me. Cheers. Cheers, bye. ref. Bye. Yeah, bye. All right. Thanks again to the ref. And just to wrap up that game, which kind of morphs into our social media news and a little bit of news. Um, the game really did have a lot of talking points on social media afterwards. Amanda. Um, one of the biggest, of course, was with that last penalty, Obama Yang's on a hat trick, uh, which I'm sure ruined a lot of people's uh, fantasy teams. And I actually had a little bet on him scoring a hat trick, um, mentioned it earlier in the day. Uh, but, you know, Lacazette comes on, he's looking sharp, he's been out for a little while, was lacking in confidence before he got injured. I personally think that the right thing happened and I don't understand why people are giving Obama Yang such a hard time. Your thoughts on that and um, and some of the comments that we've seen, especially from Alan Shearer and Glenn Hoddle. Well, I, when I sat there, I said to my cousin, what's he doing? He's on for a hat trick. And he went, I don't know. And I went, oh, I know what he's doing. He's giving the ball to him because A, he can't play Thursday, Obama Yang, and Lacazette is. Lacazette hasn't got the greatest of confidence at the moment. And to in a nothing game, when you're 2-0 up with, I don't know what, five, ten minutes to go, what a brilliant thing to do. What brilliant teamwork. What brilliant brotherhood. I sat there. I was really proud of him. Mm. When I came out, um, I had a chat with um, uh, Kevin Campbell, funny enough. We had a drink together yesterday afternoon after the game. Look at you name dropping. I know. Look at me. And I asked him you know what his views on it were and he said good on him you know it shows a really good teamwork you know uh really good what's that word like camaraderie camaraderie that's the word exactly what i was looking at you know um you know what here we go you know what you need this alexander put the ball down put it in the net don't worry about me i'm not bothered if i get a a hat trick or not but yeah. then all my ex-Arsenal friends, uh, not ex-Arsenal, non-Arsenal friends, and the pundits were like, what's he doing? It's a it's a hat trick. Of course he's got to go for it. God, if that was my team, I'd be going mad. Um, I'd, I, I'm not. I'm totally in awe of Aubameyang. And then he comes out on Twitter and says why he did it. And it was that reason he wanted to 
big him up, you know, give him some confidence. And do you know what? I'm so proud of him for doing that. Yeah. I really, really am. I don't agree with the, but I'm not competitive in my life. Generally, I'm just not. I'm only competitive with Arsenal, funny enough. But I just think what a lovely thing to do. You know what? I think, Mark, the, um, stop rustling your papers there. Put your shopping lists away. Crikey. Not me. Um, not me. So so here's, here's, here's the scoop. I think that we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't, okay? And I think if Obama Yang had taken the, the penalty for the hat trick, people would have called him selfish, all right? So, uh, Mark, what's your take on, on that and, and, and what Obama Yang did for Lacazette in yesterday's game? Yeah, I, <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got no issue with him giving up the penalty. That's fine. That, that's cool. I think it was a really good thing to do. However, my issue with a lot of players playing at Arsenal at the moment, and it has been for a while, is we're just a bit nice. We've got too many just nice players. We don't, excuse my friend, we don't have too many bastards in our team. And if Aubameyang turned around to Lacazette yesterday and was like, right, I'm having a penalty, picked up a ball, placed it, smashed home his hat trick, I wouldn't mind that. I really wouldn't because, like I said, I think we just got too many nice players. And if we've got someone up front wanting to score 35 goals a season and be completely selfish, but it's banging, the, it's banging them in. I don't really have too much of an issue with that, to be honest. I know I know it's probably not like the, the popular opinion, but um, yeah. I don't, I, um, think, I, I, don't no think, I don't think Ozil was very nice to Bellerin yesterday and I loved it. Did you see yeah, him tell exactly. him to, to, to fuck off? Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I love that. I love that because like I said at the, um, at the start of the podcast, I think, there's just so much apathy at the moment um, in the rounds, like with, with the fans, with the team. Um, it's good. Show a bit of passion. I like that. What you know, show yeah. people that want to win. Rather I than agree with that. Okay. But can can you not just see the bigger picture here with uh, Lacazette needing that goal? I can, but however, I think unless we change our formation as well, I know Lacazette come on. I know Lacazette came on um, yesterday um, late in the game. But unless we change with our formation, I can't. I can't see him both playing um, in the both starting uh, for Arsenal uh, if we if everyone's fit. Um, unless we unless we change our formation, so therefore Aubameyang and Lacazette are both going to be fighting for for one position. So I want I want players in the team which are going to be ruthless and really doing what's what, what's best what's best for them. Yeah, I, I I agree somewhat. And sorry, that was Bellerin just calling me because he wanted his balls back. He just wondered if Ozil was done with them. Um, just, just yeah, I loved seeing him do that. And he was right to do that because Ozil was making a lovely little run. He should have played the ball earlier. And, you know, we've talked a lot about this Stoke game. And, and the reason is, guys out there listening, is because it's been such a long time since we've played in the Premier League. So there's a lot to talk about and dissect, especially before Thursday's game. But... Let's just sign off with the tweet from Ozil in our news section here, Amanda, which I, this is what I love. I love it when players use ammo from, and, and the way they register stuff, right? The way they clock and remember things so they can come back to it. And I th I loved, I didn't think Ozil played that great yesterday, but I loved the the spirit that he showed. And then I also loved what he did afterwards with the tweet, right? It was brilliant. So, let me just back up here a second. In August 2017, um, a Arsenal fan, I think, um, sent a tweet to police, policing Stoke that he said, I'd like to report a robbery. And they've put apologies for the delay in replying. We've been busy looking for a missing person. Surname Ozil. Have you seen him? <laughs> Hashtag Fanta. That was great. <laughs> Ozil comes back yesterday. And obviously kept that and put at policing Stoke. Didn't help in the case of a robbery last summer. <laughs> so we took matters into our own hands. Proud to announce that we earned three hard four points today for at the Awobi effect and all the other gunners. Smile, smiley face, winky face, hashtag banter. I love it. It's brilliant. That is me all over. Yep. Quality. If you give it. You got to take it. Yeah. And banter is brilliant. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Did they replace that, Amanda? Did you see? I haven't seen I that don't, yet. 
because I've sorry, I don't know because it was late when I I, oh, okay. I screenshotted it and had a look. It is just so funny, yeah. just so funny. I think you know what I love that. That's the thing I love about social media. Obviously, in the eighties and nineties, we wouldn't have had that. Um, can you imagine the band to Liverpool fans would have got in eighty nine? <laughs> oh my gosh, that we would have killed them on social media. <laughs> oh, totally. it would have just been ha- it would have been hashtag one minute. Yeah. Because of Steve McMahon, or it'd been hashtag Mickey Thomas, or whatever it was. You know, I'm just saying. We should do um, an episode of Highbury and Hills where we go back and look at the big games and and list all the hashtags that would have. Could you imagine? Would have, oh, it would be brilliant, wouldn't it? I mean, <laughs> hashtag Will Tour. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, we would have had a hashtag against us with Ryan Giggs, wouldn't we? Oh, you know, that would have be, been brutal. Yeah, gave the ball away. Oh gosh, <laughs> God, totally. we'd have many hashtags and like, and also the main one would have been a great one. Would have been. When Adam scored, it'd been Donkey won the derby because that's oh, what we God. say. Oh, yeah. would that would have been hashtag it? Don't we? <laughs> yeah, would you? Be, oh my God, there's only so amazing hashtags. It's but true. I love that. I do love that. There's many things I don't like about social media and football, but that is one thing I love. Yeah, no, brilliant stuff. And I have um, a, a quickie, um, a real quickie for you, just going around the league real quick. Um, it was an interesting day yesterday. Things are starting to get, you know, squeaky bum time for a lot of teams. Uh, and I, I just wanted to ask you guys, it's one game away now, um, for Manchester City to, to win the Premier League and how ironic, significant, call it what you want. I remember when we won the league at Shite Heart Lane and it was just the best feeling in the world. And correct me if I'm wrong, but City could win the league at Manchester United this weekend. Could they not? Yes. I think, aren't they not at yes. home? Are they City at home? No. home right? right. United no. go to City. Yes, yeah, City you're at home, City. okay, yeah, at yeah. 5.30. Now, if they beat them, which is a big possibility, City go to Tottenham and they'd have to give them a guard of honour and they've got their left back, isn't it? What's his name? Oh, oh okay. that's it. And then have to give him a guard of honour, <laughs> which I think is quite funny. That would be awesome. So, I mean, okay, so not as significant as us winning the league at Tottenham. No. But to it's still not, it, win it against your biggest yeah, rivals, guys. That is nice. I mean, seriously. It, it would be worse for United. I was talking to my mate at work, those United, and I said to him, it, it would be worse if you were at Old Trafford and they won it there because we've won it at Tottenham and we've won it at Old Trafford. I said, and we don't stop singing about it and we won it on Merseyside. Yeah. So we don't stop singing about it, but they're not going to have that. And it's expect they're praying they get a draw United because they, you know, how would you feel? Can you imagine us going oh. to Tottenham and they're going to win? The, I couldn't go. Oh my God. Worst, don't, I don't worst feeling in the world, right, Mark? And listen to, 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 to see what City have done in the league this year and to see the struggles that Mourinho has had and the kind of the wheels that have fallen off. Even though they're second, it doesn't matter. They, no. the fact that they're so far, imagine how we'd be feeling right now if this was Tottenham. So, we oh, are so, awful. we're already far behind them. Um, but for them to actually be crowned champions of England and to be this far back, it's got to be a crushing weekend for United fans, no? Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're petrified. They All right, petrified. So, so this one real quick. Considering how many games they've won and drawn, is this City team better than our Invincibles? No, not a chance. No, no, no. Not what, for me. Why, Mark? I would. I just think... I just think... Uh, I just think... The 2014 would, would would beat them, and like we 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 didn't lose; they lost. You know, I know we, we we had a few scares along the way, but that that 2014, I think, were probably. I know probably I'm going to get some abuse for this, but I think it's probably the greatest team I've ever seen, front to back. You can't pick any holes in that team, ever. Mm, yeah, it's true, and the fact that we did go unbeaten, I think, gives us the extra edge. Right then, um, that's that's uh, that's going to be quite a weekend, and I, for one, am really looking forward to the prospect of City, you know, being crowned champions against Manchester United. It will it, be be one of those really really cool football moments. Um, obviously, over the the last few days, uh, Arsenal fans um, have been paying tri- tribute to a very very special player, um, Rocky Rowcastle. Uh, was probably, you know, for me, one of the best number sevens I've seen, um, not only play at Arsenal, but, um, you know, 
in terms of being a British player, his skill set, his technical ability, the things that he was <clears> able to do, he was really sublime to watch. And Amanda, you you were there for most of Rocky's career. You've been following the Gunners for such a long time. You were there in the dog days, as you've told us um, as well. Your, I know my favourite, but I want to hear a little bit from you, the nostalgia when Rocky's name is mentioned, what he means. You were with Kevin Campbell yesterday as well, who also was uh, one of many Arsenal players and fans uh, to pay tribute to him too. Oh, honestly, I just loved Rocky. What a man, what a gentleman, what a player, what a proper footballer. I was there his whole career at Arsenal and devastated when he left. And part of the 89 squad team every oh but my favorite rocky goal and this comes there's a few but this this has to be one of the, my favorites at man united in 91 oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah honestly halfway line takes the ball beats about three players and, and that, literally mm. chips the goalkeeper and the place went mad and we was at old trafford <laughs> Honestly, that's what he could do. And, I'm, you know, I think about him with such fondness and such love. He was taken too soon from us, from his family, from everyone. Sad, you know, 17 years ago on last Saturday he died, he passed away. And we, there was, you know, there wasn't much unfortunate singing yesterday, but we did get a couple of Rocky, 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 Rocky Castle. And... When, you know, when I was out with Kevin after, there was a, a lovely couple in the pub that came up with a huge banner and got Kevin to sign it. It was Roe Castle, a whole banner on him. Aww. And it is sad, you know, it, it really, it was just one of life's great footballers and a decent person. I, I was lucky I met him. I put my picture on with him when I was probably about, I don't know, 17, yeah, it's 18. It's a cute picture. It's a really cute Aww. picture. Yeah. And all you can see is my big smile with him. And yeah. I just thought, I'm so honoured that I met him, you know. And just just, just love him, to be honest. You know that goal that you mentioned. And Mark, you were probably not born when Rocky was playing, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, unfortunately, I um, my earliest memories have uh, been 33. Um, uh, about the 93 season is my earliest memories. But I think the way the ex- Ex Arsenal players talked about him, and you know stories of him like crying in his car when when we let him go, and you know, and, and the famous quote, you know, you remember who you are, what you are, and who you represent. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, so many, you know, so many great stories, and obviously, I've seen all, all the great goals and skills, and uh, yeah, one of my biggest regrets is uh, not being old enough to see so, so many games of his. But uh, yeah, but. Every, you know, every single player who speaks about him has got so much good to say and he's, he's just an absolute legend. Do you know what I love about younger fans like you, Mark? Um, because millennials get a lot of sticks sometimes for not respecting the history of a club and there was a lot of history before the Premier League. Some of it was good, some of it was not so good. Um, Amanda could give you a rundown of that. But I love that you recognise what he meant to Arsenal and what he still means to fans and the relationship that he had with his teammates and how much they they just love him, still remember him and respect him. And it's so important for us to not forget, you know, those moments and to see younger fans um, embrace it as well and acknowledge it, I think is really important. And that goal that you're talking about, Amanda, it wasn't just a chip over any goalkeeper. If I remember, it was Schmeichel. Mm-hmm. Um, and he skinned, I think he skinned Brian Robson on the way, who was probably the best midfielder in the country at the time. And, and I, one of my favorite goals is the, is the Littlewoods Cup in 1988. I think John, John Barnes had already scored a beautiful goal in that match. And then, um, Rocky hits this shot and Brian Moore, uh, yells, you know, where did he get the power from? And, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was, um, it was such a great equalizing goal. And then we actually, back in the day, we, we replayed them twice in that, in that year in the Little Woods Cup. And eventually they beat us 2-1. Um, and I think Forrest went on to win the Little Woods Cup that year against Luton, who beat us the previous year and made it back. It was kind of insane, but. Those moments, special moments. And again, you know, there was something about us playing Liverpool back then, wasn't there, Amanda, that was just really special, as special as the rivalry with United in in the in the Premier League era when we were really, really top dogs. 
Yeah, there was. But it was also um, Man United as well. I mean, to score that... Oh, honestly, That's just great. love him. Great stuff. Well, yeah, loved him. Remembering Rocky Rowcastle here with the Highbury and Hills squad. Um, you can follow us on Twitter at Highbury Hills. You can check out all of our past episodes on YouTube, Highbury Hills. Uh, we're also on iTunes. Um, and, you know, uh, we love hearing from you. Mark uh, is on this week as our fan of the week. I think he's having a good time. You having a good time, Mark? I'm having a great time. Thank you very much again for having me on. All right. Awesome. And remember, if you want to be fan of the week, just hit us up on Twitter and let us know why you think you should be on the show. Um, Amanda, you ran a poll um, a couple of days ago and it got quite uh, a a lot of feedback and got people going. It got me going a little bit. What was that? The World Cup poll? The one? Yeah, I decided to run a poll. And what the poll said was, would you rather Arsenal win the Champions League or England win the World Cup? Because me, personally, uh, Arsenal come first, 100%. I'm not actually that interested in England compared to Arsenal. When England play in the World Cup, of course I want them to win. I want them to win the World Cup, but not over Arsenal win the Champions League. And the poll came out 88% in favour of what I said. There's still 12%. That wanted mm. England to win the World Cup more than Arsenal win Champions League. But so, I yeah. might do another one this week. Okay. Um, and I'm going to warn you about it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us so, what it is. We'll get Mark to weigh in on it. Early. Okay. Um, yeah, it's going to be controversial and I'm probably going to get a little bit of abuse, <clears throat> but I'm going to do it because I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> not really um, okay so the poll is going to be um, Arsenal to win the Europa and Wenger stays or Arsenal oh, to lose gosh, the Europa gosh. and Wenger goes oh my now, god now oh. I'm not saying a word I'm just going to put it out there and we will discuss it next show Mark what? where do you right. lie I'll tell you where oh, I lie god. go on go on mate go on son get stuck but, in there yeah. <laughs> shin so shin really hard for me because I I want Wenger to leave. I want Wenger, I've been wanting Wenger to leave for a long time now. I think it's done. Every season that goes by, his reputation just gets more and more sullied with every poor season that goes by. But the long and short of it is, I'm an Arsenal fan. Like if you're if you're an Arsenal fan, the long, the long and short of it, you want us to win trophies. And it might be short sighted, I know, but I want us to win the Europa League, and they're all. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, people that you know downplay the Europa League, but as I mentioned before, like one of my earliest memories was in in '93, um, and obviously following up following Arsenal and uh, the Cup Winners' Cup and winning that, I wasn't thinking, oh, you know, this is a you know a subpar competition. I loved it. I loved the Cup run and I loved beating Palmer in the final. It, it was great. And for me, if you if you're following a team, you know, tro- it's all about trophies. I know it's probably short sighted, and I know another season of Wenger. And I know it probably is not going to get better, but the long and short of it for me is following your team. You want us to do well. You want us to win. I can't. I can't want us to lose. I can't. Can't do it. So. Uh, so. I was talking to. to I was talking to the guys on uh, Love Sport Radio um, yesterday, and we we talked about this and how a lot for a lot of Arsenal fans, their biggest fear is that when you know if and when we win Europa League that there is that slight chance um, that Wenger will be seen as getting us back to the promised land and mm. that he could get an, another extension on his contract oh, we don't. know we know that he is um, a manager that that you know works to the very end day of his contract uh, Amanda seems to think that you know if he wins this he'll be off. But I'm like you, Mark. I want to win Europa League, especially now we're looking at that top four. um, And we've known for weeks that we're dead and buried in that top four. But to see Tottenham spank Chelsea the way they did yesterday, guarantee to be in the Champions League now, I think. I think it's probably one of the most critical and important competitions for us um, in, in the last few years. It's been wonderful winning the FA Cup as many times as we have. But we have got to win this trophy. And there is still a long way to go. We've got a tough, tough tie coming up against Siska Moscow. I think people are just thinking we're going to walk all over them. But it is not easy to go to Russia and play. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you. And um, Are you going to let us know today, Amanda? Or are you going to let us know on Twitter where you lie on this one? Or are you just going to let me let, wait till next week? 
Yeah, you have to tune in to find out All right, what, then. <laughs> what Princess Guna thinks. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. All right, cool. Right, my turn. Ooh, Mark, are you happy to play Snog, Mary, Avoid? Oh, my God. Are you serious? Oh, wow. No, no, no. Yeah. The word is yes. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> okay. It's Snog, Mary, Avoid. Wait, he um, might not know who two of the players are. Yeah, well, oh, you on. know what? Who, it, who are the players? All right, all right, go on, go on. Let's go on. do Sophie first then, yeah? Right, right Sophie. Yep. I'm doing one relative to Russia. Now, before everyone jumps on me, I know these three players are not from Russia, but it's the Eastern Bloc. It's the cold bit of the, the world. It's over there. So three of these, okay? Um, Andrei Ashavin. He's Russian. Oh, he is, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought he was Ukrainian. I don't know. Um, Igor Step- Stepanovs and Oleg Luzny. Okay, so Luzny <laughs> is the one who's Ukrainian. Uh, right. Shavin's the Russian and Stepan's Stepan Latvian. That's correct. There Stepan. we go. They all live in the Eastern Bloc and it's all cold. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah, we need to keep them warm. Although I love how Mark kind of was like, oh my God, I have to play Snog, Marry, Avoid, really? <laughs> well, yeah, De- does, yeah. uh, Demi Ann yeah. has done it. Harry uh, did it last week. So you got to man up and do it as well. Right. Yeah, Shavin, no worries. Our Shavin Stepan. Uh, so, okay. So Luzhny is now an assistant coach, I think, at the Dynamo. Kiev. Um, hmm. All those years ago, he was brought in to, to dethrone our boy Lee Dixon um, from right back, and he was not able to d- do that really. But consistent, he played. He played a lot more for Arsenal than Stepanov. So I'm going to avoid Stepanov's completely. He, he only played 17, time, 17 times for us in the league, and so he's an easy one to avoid. Uh, I'm going to snog Luzhny because I don't know. I think it'll be like, you know, a few vodkas, be a fun night out. And I'm going to marry Arshavin. And come on, how can you not marry Andre Arshavin after what he did to Liverpool at Anfield all those years ago? It's a moment we Arsenal fans will never, ever forget. And as I'm saying it now, I can see his four little fingers up, looking at the camera with his little blushy cheeks smiling away. That's me. Done. Mark? Easy, easy one for me to marry. It's got to be Arshavin again. Yeah, after um, after smashing four in at Anfield. I mean, come on, you got to marry him. Um, I would, I would, I would snog Luzny because it'd probably go to snog me and it was so uncoordinated that it'd probably miss the target. <laughs> so I would snog Luzny and I would, uh, I'd avoid Stepanovs because he's probably one of the worst players I've ever seen in an Arsenal shirt. Yeah. So there you go. Other than Skilachi, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Mine's a little bit different. Oh, shocker. I'm going shocker. I'm going to avoid Luzny because, A, I can never spell his name right and he's going to get on my nerves. Um, Stepanovs, I'm marrying. Do you know why I'm marrying Stepanovs? Because I'm going to teach him how to play football oh. and defend me. <laughs> so that is going to go on. And I have to snog on Sharvin for exactly the reason you said so. For those four beautiful goals at Anfield. I couldn't believe what I was watching that day. Um, And they are my snog, Mary Avoid. Brilliant stuff, people. All right, thanks to Mark for being a good sport and playing snog, marry, avoid. You know, the Highbury and Hill squad have a lot of good friends from the Arsenal um, community out there, and we love to support uh, different groups and pods, and we have guests on from different pods and stuff like that. And Amanda, you've recently joined a group, which I've also uh, joined as well, and we wanted to give them a little shout-out. I don't often do shout-outs. When I join Twitter, I see them every Friday. But you know what? you busy, eh? Yeah, it did. I only had a few thousand followers, then it was pretty easy. But um, I love, I love, I love women. I love women in football. I love women. I big up women all the time. I hate women that want to put down women, if you get what I mean. So the more Guna girls I meet in my world, the better. Okay. Mm. And it was because of Mike, actually, from the Gunas in the USA pod, when he was over, he mentioned this group and said, oh, the girls really like the podcast and they follow you. I said, oh, brilliant. Let me follow them. They are at Guna Gals. So it's G-A-L-S. 
all one word, at Guna Gals on Twitter. But we joined the Facebook group, as you said. They love listening to the pod. The three people that make me laugh so much are Tiffany, Laurie and Jessica. Honestly, mad arsenal. But the, they've got over 380 Guna Gals. Guna Gals. That's brilliant. In their Facebook group, right, yeah. who are all mad passionate Arsenal fans. And when I see the pictures of them watching a match, I, I get my jeans on, I get in the car, rock up to the Emirates and come home. They have to, like you, they have to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night, whatever it is to watch our games. They're doing it in full regalia, massive Arsenal fans. And do you know what? They deserve a massive shout out. I want everyone to follow them because, trust me, these girls know their Arsenal. <laughs> Even did a little bit of the cowbell for them. How about that? A little bit of a rant for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. A nice, positive, happy rant. All right. Well, um, we'll uh, we'll be sharing, you know, more of that good stuff with everyone as the weeks go by. And Mark, this is where you get to chime in as well, mate. It's predictions time. We didn't really want to dig into like the X's and O's on the game um, on Thursday. We like to talk about it a little bit more afterwards. Talk to us about how you see the game unfolding on Thursday, uh, what you think will happen and what your prediction is. Look into your crystal football and let's see what you see, mate. Right. I think that it's going to be really, really close. I think when we were drawn against uh, CSK Moscow or Siska, um, <laughs> I think that people just thought it was a foregone conclusion looking into the semi-final, but they're, they're no mugs, you know. There's, there's a reason why they're there in the quarterfinals. You know, they're gonna be they're gonna be organised, and I think that providing what we really need to do is not concede at home. Providing we don't concede at home, if we win one nil or two nil, I take that every day of the week. But I do think it's gonna be a lot more difficult than than people are making out to be. So I think we just need to keep it really really tight. I think that I think it's gonna be. I think it might. I think it's going to be two one. I think they might score first, and then we will score and win. Um, but yeah, I think we we do need to keep try and keep a clean sheet. But I just I just can't I, don't, I can't see us uh, keeping a clean sheet. I think it'll be two one to Arsenal. All right, and then of course on Sunday we play Southampton at home. Two fifteen kick off. Uh, Southampton are in serious trouble. Very very much fighting for their lives uh, in the Premier League. Prediction, quick prediction on that one. Quick prediction on that one. I'm gonna go for four in the Arsenal. Oh, I like, I like it. Oh, four in the Arsenal. Could you, Amanda? um, Predictions for both games. Mm, Look at me. I said three-one Saturday. Uh, Sunday, and I got three nil. That's not. I'm, I'm not doing bad, am I? You know, you've really picked up your game. I mean, I don't know how you get away like... with not getting yellow cards, but yeah, you picked up your game. Uh, the Although ref- you are I crap at how may I assist you? I might just say, like, oh, I'm bottom Tosh of the league. Of bottom time. of the league. We're yeah. not playing it at the moment, so that's good. <laughs> 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 right, Siska, Saturday, uh, Thursday, two nil Arsenal. I like your style. Southampton Sunday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, see, Mark, what you're not taking into account is we're playing Thursday night. So, mm -mm 1-0 Arsenal Sunday. I think it'll be a bit of a struggle. Remember, relegation, it's going to be a good match, actually. I think it will actually be a good match. Should be. It's going to be an open game. Look, I think there could be a lot of goals in that game. Siska on Thursday, I fancy Lacazette to really build on what Mm. he did uh, coming on at the weekend. I'm going to call a Lacazette hat-trick and I say we win 3-1 on Thursday. And then against Southampton, I think it could be one of those 4-2 kind of results. If Southampton go down, they're going to have to fight for their lives. The spaces will be wide open at the back. They're going to have to take risks, especially if we get an early goal. And I say 4-2 to us um, on Sunday. Right. It has been an epic show. And Mark, you've been a fabulous guest. Uh, Before we let you go, Amanda, we've got another big show coming up next week with a fabulous guest who you got a little bit of an early hangout with at the weekend. Remind everybody what's coming up next week and how they can be part of the show. I will. And I'd also like to thank Mark because he's been (laughs) patiently waiting for us this week and it's just been a bit stressful. And I met Mark at, what game was it, Mark? Half time? I can't remember. Okay, it was the Milan game. Oh, the Milan. And we had a good old chat and I'm so pleased you're our fan of the week. So thank you from me as well for coming on and putting up with us. 
Absolutely. But, um, Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, so that was lovely. So yesterday after the game, as I said, I met up with Kevin Campbell and he listens to the show. So hello, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. A- Mark, say hello, hello to Kevin. Hi, Kevin. He go. absolutely... Try, try, what's that word? Promotes us to the hill. He loves us, and it's brilliant to have an ex legend like that. Um, love our show is just beyond anything that we could hope. He follows us on Twitter, he tweets for us, he is just great, and I love him. So, I've roped him in to coming on. He's on our next show. So, Mr. Kevin Campbell will be talking to the Highbury and Hills crew next week brilliant if you've got any questions please um tweet highbury and hills and hashtag cam uh hashtag kc please and we'll try and answer it he'll, he'll tr- ask kc ask, ask kc yeah, ask kc I like that. yeah yeah ask and KC. it's highbury hills um, on twitter Yes, at Drop Highbury Hills. Yeah. Um, if you can't find that, <laughs> uh, at Sophie, whatever her name is, at Sucker Diva or at me, Guna Girl 969. I forget, you know, I, I keep thinking I'm Princess Guna. Anyway, so, yes, great news. Very excited. And we're going to be talking all things Arsenal plus all these other clubs as well. And I learned how to say Trabs on Spore yesterday. So look at me. Wow. Well done. This is Get epic. Good effort. I mean, seriously, this is this is getting ridiculous now with your pronunciations and stuff. All right, well, a great show. Thanks a lot. And then, Mark, let everyone remind everyone where they can follow you and any closing remarks you would like to make here on Highbury and Hills. The floor, my son, is yours. Yes, so you can follow me at Marky249 and Twitter and follow all my useless ramblings about Arsenal, if you do so wish. And uh, and yes, and if you'd like to donate to my uh, to my run, I'm running the London Marathon the 22nd of April. Uh, it's for a fantastic cause. It's for uh, at Victor Children, and they put on fantastic days out for uh, visually impaired children. And the links are pinned to uh, to my Twitter. So um, if you want to follow me, that that'd be fantastic. That'd be great to hear from you all. We'll be sponsoring you, but you have to oh, remind me because my memory of a 48 year old that I am. Just goes out the window. I'm definitely sponsoring you. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly 49, but 48. Excellent stuff. Well, Mark, listen, it's been so great having you on the show today. We're, we're very proud of all the things that you do for charity. And, you know, well done. Keep going. Good luck in the marathon. Good luck in the snow today on the East Coast. I know that you're um, stateside right now. Be safe. And, you know, we've really enjoyed uh, having you uh, on the Highbury and Hills poddy here. And uh, we'll be back next week, as Amanda said, with Kevin Campbell. In the meantime, Amanda, what is what? Always Arsenal. Hey, I'm Jules Breach. Hi, I'm Adrian Charles. Hi, I'm Jason Candy. Hi, my name's Lee Dixon. I'm Alan Smith. Hi, I'm Ryan Giggs. Hello, I'm Matt Lucas. Hi, I'm Andrew from Arsblog. I'm Gary Lineker, and you're listening to Highbury and Heels. <laughs>